Aloha everyone and welcome back to another space weather update. My name is Alexis and I'm here to track my consciousness as well as yours in comparison to all of the space weather data that's freely available for all of us. We have a lot to get into today, so stick around and here we go. So we have had some major solar flare activity the last 28 to 48 hours. Not only solar flares, but coronal mass ejections and filament eruptions. So we embodied, I would say, or bodied here on Earth, the activity from the 20th, which is now not even showing on here, but the 20th, 21st is sort of landing here on Earth now. And what you see here in the 23rd area, this stuff is going to be hitting us Tuesday, at, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday in the midweek. So everything's moving really fast. It looks like there's no dilly dallying when it comes to the energies popping off the sun right now. It's releasing and arriving with decent logic. So that's good, at least for the data. But for those of you who struggle during these major events, my heart goes out to you. Please continue doing your heavy metal detox as well as, of course, doing the foot baths to help pull it out of your feet, taking binders like charcoal to bind with these metals, bentonite clay, zeolite, ver or orally taking these things, and also putting it in your foot baths to help draw it out every night if you need to. Those of you with tattoos especially, we're having some issues over there. I have a few people who've come through saying that, yeah, they are getting headaches and on an extreme case, seizures from the solar flare activity. The largest solar flare that we've had in the last 24 hours was an M5. The largest one we had in the last month, right before the new year on the 31st of December into the 1st, was an X5 rated solar flare. So I'm gonna show you the differences in the, on the chart real quick. Last two hours, things have slowed down. Last six hours, you can see we did have one M4, so a decent size compared to the one last night, the largest, almost the same size. Here is the largest one that happened at around, it was around 8.30 p.m. here in Phoenix last night on, on Monday, basically. But this is, it happened technically on Tuesday UTC 3, 3.33, we could probably say, around 3.33 a.m. UTC. So if you can convert your times using those two times that I gave you, I hope that'll give you a little bit of reference point. Let me know if there's a better way for me to say the times for you guys too in the comments. Thank you. So let's look at the last three days. You can see there's a substantial difference between the, uh, the last three days. Obviously, the last 24 hours has been pretty nuts. Just been having solar flare after solar flare after solar flare after solar flare it's been insane and i am hoping that all the emergency workers out there were well hydrated and well fed so they could handle the influx of disturbance that happened from the sun as you can see here the day before a little bit crazy but nothing like literally just one solar flare that hit an m level and the day before that very quiet so the 21st of january quiet 22nd of January, starting getting crazy. 23rd, we're in it. We're in the crazy. People are already going to be moving towards the 24th in just a few hours. It's going to switch days. So we've been watching. I would say the winner, though, is the 23rd for activity when it comes to kind of the universal time of Earth, if that helps. So there are some more waves that we're going to be tracking. First, I'm going to show you spaceweather.com. To say the specific solar wind, we're going to watch the solar wind because this is going to be our hint when more of these waves are going to hit us because they're going to be hitting us one after another after another because these two solar flares on the surface are competing. They're flashing at the same time or right after each other. Up, down, up, down. This particular one, not as earth facing, the one up top here, a little more earth activity, I would say, coming or earth facing activity from this one. It was my best guess and understanding of the uh, spacing of all this. This one could maybe miss us a little more, but this could also be the shot where that huge plasma filament came out the bottom and that this one fed the more energy, I would say, outward. This one was the juicier sunspot than this guy. This guy was more magnetically powerful. And this one looks like it gave off more plasma into the atmosphere, if that helps. It doesn't really matter. It was just interesting. And the observation I had 
they are expecting the aurora to basically begin to increase, which is why we watch the solar wind speed shift and change around. We also watch the solar wind speeds because the data here will just jump or delete during moments where there's big solar flares or the impact and the data just starts to get very bizarre. So I think they just cut that out because the, the equipment is sensitive and <laughs> I think that's why they cut it out. It could just be to hide things, but either way, it's like the obvious type of hiding. And I'm going to show you another example of that in the show and <laughs> the obvious type of hiding where you can still see very clearly. So that's nice. That's nice. I know that's not probably what they wanted, but it's a good compromise. I appreciate it. We can compromise on that. So the big juicy flare, I think, went towards more so Mercury, Venus, and Mars. They're getting those codes, not the M5 codes, but that big juicy flare we're going to look at some imagery of over here. Let's look at that big filament again. The superstar filament. Here it was. Oh no, that wasn't her imposter here she is look at this so much matter <laughs> pretty awesome this one is probably going to be the juicier one of 2024 or of the solar cycle there was a lot of mass there in my opinion it was pretty cool and yeah we just kept having radio blackouts so if you were trying to use any sort of radio yesterday good luck that was not going to be an easy day and all those emergency crews Hopefully they were using some other technology to talk to each other. <laughs> but uh, yeah, some big bright flares, a few more filaments, some flooding in San Diego, very big flooding. They've got a major cleanse of water going through San Diego. They needed it. They really needed that cleanse and I'm happy for them to release all that baggage. And I hope that everyone is safe as well while doing so. Here again are these two sunspot groups labeled 3559, the one that gave us the M5 yesterday, or last evening, I should say, and 3561, which is where I think that giant filament came out of, if I'm understanding correctly. And everybody just wants to know, when's the X flare coming out? We're seeing the activity start to pick up like this. It's like, okay, let's see, like, is the friction going to keep building? Is there more going to come out? Or is this it? The question's still in the air a little bit, but it could be we're on the other end of it and things are going to calm down now and that's why i'm sitting here doing this video with you looking at pictures of the sun let's look at those sun spots again these red this red zone and this blue zone shouldn't be near each other they shouldn't be near each other now on the earth end of things consciousness been all over the place we had a decent period rough periods we're going to come back to this the cryptocurrencies everything is going down in price basically but i am getting the information that the the amount or the liquid of it is going up the amount that's available may be increasing people are inputting more resources into the area and it may not be by choice but there is a redistribution of wealth for karmic clearing on this planet happening right now if you haven't heard about it many people talk about it it gets it gets an intense conversation, but if you can stand back and just watch the broader strokes, they're there. You're seeing the shift, and I'm seeing it in more subtle ways with the space weather, and that's where I get to be more specific. So here it is in Italy. Activity coming in over the last few days, though. Decently quiet, not as big of a deal. So this wave, this intensity is showing up. It's showing up in New Zealand over here, showing up in Saudi Arabia right here excuse me on this one number two and number three lithuania we're seeing over there here we go here we go we're gonna now look at the lightning so this is this plasma's coming through it's got a ground it's got a ground it's got to find its home it's got to figure out where it's going as it passes through and past earth look at all the areas the lightning is gathering here according to this map over by texas over by i would say northern mexico we have some intensity over here in all these little i would say this is a little bit of cradle of civilization kind of vibes over here but let's go a little bit deeper so here's the more of those moments where the data is just blatantly missing like black cube level but black cube level obviousness at the same time so it's kind of being honest without being honest it's an interesting conversation i meditated about it today but there's these moments where it's like hey over washington and new york you're not going to get to see this live hd satellite footage okay 
um, in the middle of the ocean between these two countries. Also, no ma'am. Um, over here on top of Paris and, Ger and over by Berlin, basically, in London. Paris, London, and Berlin. Look how close those are, actually. Interesting. I never thought about that, the closeness of these places. The same way until this moment, but hey, there's another black cube. And over here, we aren't going to even tell you what's up here, you guys. It's just nothing. You know, between the United Kingdom and Reykjavik, don't worry about it, okay? Over here, don't worry about this guy either. Don't worry about it up here. Don't worry about it over here. <laughs> Northern British Columbia. Don't even worry about it. I just thought these these blocks were funny. Oh, and now that you zoom out, it's fine. But you can zoom in a little closer. Oh, we fixed it. Did we fix it? I don't know. Maybe that was meant to be. Weird. I was like, what's going on? I got to talk about that. And now I've fixed it on the stream. But keep that in mind. Maybe that was all on purpose. I'm going to trust the process. Trust the process. Look at these cyclones. Still going. These ones are hitting land, though. That's new. Becoming land bound. That's a little more new. Over here. And over here. Heads up, Queensland. Hey. <laughs> Busy. But don't worry, it's not just you. We're, this is a visual of exactly what it looks like when the earth gets impacted by all of these waves of extra solar explosions okay the earth is or the sun shines coming in on the right or you see those little black and white balls or orbs that's just that's the earth on the right hand side where you see the white side that's the sun shine side and so everything's going from right to left and both of these and both of these examples the sunshine is moving from right to left so this is the dark side or the back side of the earth. The night side of the earth shows where all that friction kind of gathers and continues passing past earth. But you can see that the electromagnetic field behind us, all these electromagnetic lines, they almost expand to body this wave and move through it. It's very beautiful. I love watching the waves go past. When the, all the data lines up nicely, it's so nice. Some days it's hard we get lucky sometimes we've got some Tennessee shaking happening right as we're filming this video a little more in Northern California overall though we're gonna watch because we did have that 7.0 hit yesterday in this region basically already a little bit more north of here actually it's interesting that this isn't showing up oh no here we go it was on the border oh now they're saying it's more in because this was the country the 7.0 happened, but now it seems like things have migrated, maybe, to into China, or the border of onto China. Oh, look at that. It's very close. So, interesting. Now they're claiming that these are all happening just a little bit more south of where the 7.0 happened, and it doesn't seem like I can even look at that one anymore. Interesting. So this little cluster is what was kind of reacting, I would say, when that solar wind from the 20th hit us. It was, this is what happened. It kind of hit us here. But also, potentially, that M5, or those, that build up to the M5, was connected to this particular situation in this area. So sending the love here. That might have been the focal point where the energy was kind of ro hitting the planet and then coming out the other side kind of energy. This is the area of impact from the solar flare, was this particular region, and pretty normal on the day side here in the west. On the summer, summery days of South America, they got the M5, and then they had some more earthquakes in the area, I would say, of the direct impact, which does make sense to me as well. So. Let's not get alarmed, but look at the bizarre earthquake activity we're dealing with today. This could be multiple impacts, like I said, from multiple solar flares and these CMEs just like plowing through one after another. Also, it's a convenient time to shake things up anyways because, oh, it's just mother nature. So I think both those stories are on the table. Ooh, that one was the weirdest. Venezuela is winning so far and the weirdest looking. New Zealand is certainly up there, though. Look at all this. So planetary-wise, we're having some shaking, and which is going to continue, I would say, because like I, all the solar wind is still on its way. There's a lot yet to come. 
that whole pile up that I showed you that happened the last 24 hours, this stuff has to physically arrive here. The light did. And the extra, the radiation, the higher frequency radiation has already hit us. We've watched it, but all that matter and plasma is a little slower and it's going to hit us. It's going to, it's going to bathe us. I would say it's the best word for it. And we're grateful for the shifts that happen. Now, the energy we're bathing in today is called the blue self-existing self eagle. And it is guided by magic. It is the heart chakra day. Yesterday, while all of these solar flares really started kicking up and the earthquake happened, the 7.0, that big plasma flare like came out of the sun, all of it, that was happening on the white electric wizard day guided by endlessness, which is kind of funny because it did seem like the solar flares were endless. And it was also the solar plexus chakra day. So the sun, the solar plexus, very active. So I'm going to see if those patterns keep per persisting and then I can use this calendar to see ahead of the day. It's like, oh, when's the next solar plexus day? That's probably going to do some goods. I think it's every seven days maybe is what they're saying. But the next solar plexus chakra day looks like it's going to be the, the 29th. Okay, everybody. So let's just let's just see if the next huge day of solar flares is going to be the 29th. Then I think we figured out, figured this out, and we used the Mayan calendar as like the final piece. But I'm hoping that would be great if we we just figure it out finally. That would be awesome. Now I'll just look at my calendar and be like, okay, we're gonna figure out <laughs> we're gonna figure out all the things that we need to know ahead of time, so we can schedule our lives and make things even easier and breezier for all of us to utilize the energies available. What other energies are available before you go? The moon's about to be full in the sign of Leo. It's currently in the sign of Cancer in its home. So you should be already feeling the warm fuzzies, I would say. The warm fuzzies. You guys know what those are? <laughs> it's the feel-good feelings. It's the, I love my home, and I love my family, and I love myself, and I love my life kind of energies emotionally and even if you're having a hard time with some of those things, per choose the things that you do love and things that are going well. Even if it's not for you, you can even just be happy for things going well for another. If you can't think of a single thing for you other than the fact that you're healthy and alive and you're capable of commanding your own thoughts, be happy for other things you see because that'll, that'll all come right back. It'll all come right back. We're all connected. So the love you give out, you still receive. You may not know how you're getting it, but don't worry. That currency will have to come back to you. Thank you again for subscribing to my YouTube channel, you guys. If you're watching this, you haven't subscribed, please do it. Hit the notification bell so you can see the live premieres. And I can get a few of your comments live and connect the best I can from all the way over here in the universe. Thank you so much. And head over to my website, ascensiondiaries.com, to sign up on the emergency mailing list, please and thank you, because guess what? The technology could go down, but I got these lists and we can maybe get back in touch once everything sorts itself out. So it's the least we can do <laughs> to try and stay connected no matter what happens on social media or with the internet or with technology. That's, it's an attempt to keep that lifeline available for all of us. The Super Bowl is about to begin as well, so we need to get eyes on that, please and thank you. They're gonna, it's gonna be in Vegas. It was here in Phoenix last year, and this this year it's in Vegas. So eyes on, guardians, please and thank you. You know what to do. Just, I'm just telling you what's up. What's up? It's that. I'll tell you that right now. That's what's up. We're gonna take take focus on that. Love you all very much. Let's do a little meditation while we watch the Global Consciousness dot get even bluer from its little chartreuse green color here we go here we go so deep breath in hold make some good intentions for the world and blow those out like a wish another deep breath in clarify those intentions and those good wishes for the world and breathe those out again. Thank you. And finally, breathe in. Receive your image. Hold. 
All right, release. All right, the, did it get a little greener, the global consciousness dot? Maybe just a little bit. Maybe if we went a little longer, but you can continue this meditation. Thank you for joining this video. What did I see in my image? I saw an elephant. The last time I shot this, I saw a hockey stick and I saw a capybara. So that's, I got to get three pictures because I've shot this video twice, but it is what it is. I'm going to take those hints. I'm going to carry on, continue breathing good intentions into our mutual world. I love you all very much. Thanks for sending me all the extra news that you can, keeping me on top of things. And I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Bye for now.